What's up everybody, my name is Jance, and today we're going to be taking a look at Boros Brawlin Hactos. I think that was the best way I could conjure up that that, uh, that name, right? Anyways, today is Wednesday, so we are going to be hopping into some Brawl. And uh, who, who better to brawl with than the legendary unscarred brawler himself, Hactos, who reminds me a lot of Achilles, right? So Hactos has this amazing ability of whenever he enters the battlefield, he's going to choose a number at random, and this is just for the RNG gods to choose, of course. Whether it be 2, 3, or 4, he's going to have protection from each converted mana cost other than the chosen number. So if he chooses 2, then nothing else will work on him other than 2 cost cards, or 3 cost cards, or yada yada yada. Okay, so obviously very awesome. Now the downside is Hactos has to attack each combat if able. So you have the 6-1 who's very likely to die to a 2 mana card, a 3 mana card, or a 4 mana card if, you know, your opponent has a creature or has a spell within that range. He's very likely to die, but if not, then he's just going to sort of wreck face on your opponent. Now, since this is a brawl, it's very singleton format, so I'll go over the major pieces and then we'll sort of, you know, work through the rest of it. So down in our lower end, we have a bunch of cheap creatures that get down and sort of are already evasive or can make our other creatures evasive. So you have Alcid, Healers, Loyal, that kind of stuff. Then you move on up. A little bit you have things that have the highest value for their cost right robber of the rich hero which creates new cards for his glass casket gonna keep our board stock ancestral blade gonna keep our oh, I'm sorry said that backwards ancestral blade gonna keep our board stock and glass casket is gonna be some super easy and cheap removal along with lava cool justice strike and response resurgence so we do have a fling in here, and I would like to go ahead and note that the fling in here is mostly for the Hactos, because obviously Hactos has 6 power, so swinging in with Hactos and then flinging him is already 12 damage, which means as long as you've dealt 8 damage, that's going to be enough to finish your opponent off, and generally is a great way to round out a game. Then we have things such as Response Resurgence, which are going to allow us to extend our, our turn, right, as well as Chance for Glory, which can give us additional swing ins to hopefully... Uh, Get the damage that we need without our opponent being able to draw what they need to deal and then down in the top end you have the fun stuff the Embercleave, the elspeth conquers death the outlaws merriments and the aurelias and the angelic exultations to wrap up all these boros cards in a nice little bow and knot now that's going to do it for the deck tech or deck breakdown and i would like to remind everybody if you're new here please be sure to subscribe if you enjoy the content hit that bell notification leave a like if you enjoy the video and leave a comment if you have any suggestions on this video future videos or past videos now we're going to go and hop right into the matches Alrighty, showtime eric going to be our first foe with our hactos deck ah uh, it's a little costly but i'll keep it of course, re resituate things around. Bum 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 bum. All right, so we'll have mana for the Justice Strike, which at least is some removal. Mace of the Valiant. We have a whole lot of three drops, huh? A whole lot of three drops. Three and four is kind of our sweet spot, so that's what we're going to be searching for here. Bag of Holding. I guess that's that's really really good and look at that we're actually gonna be able to get a war boss down on curve or we get down to Mesa Valiant well we can go Mesa Valiant war boss Mesa Valiant or we go war boss Mesa Valiant banishing light for whatever they may be playing afterwards hmm I say we go Mace first Mace to the face. Alright, gaining some life, and they are crawl harpooning. Crawl harpooning. Harpooning. <laughs> Anyways, we'll throw down the Legion War Boss. Um, it'll put two counters down there. The Gabo will swing in unsuccessfully. That's okay. We do have a Justice Strike that can take care of the Crawl Harpooner, or we could simply attach Mace of the Valiant to our Legion War Boss, and when we go to swing in with Legion War Boss plus our little Gabo, it should get the Mentor effect. Change that. There's an Obnixilis Cruelty, which is going to be oh so cruel to us. That's okay. It's A to the okay. 
I think we will just Justice Strike their Crawl Harpooner come their turn, so we'll kick it back to them. We're, we're missing our creatures. We have plenty of them in the deck, that I know, but none in hand. Alright, so, correction, we're not going to Justice Strike the Crawl Harpooner, we're going to Justice Strike the Questing Beast, because that thing's a little bit bigger, a little bit better, a little bit better to kill. So, now they'll swing in with Justice Strike. With just a strike with crawl harpooner you know what i meant <laughs> we can actually go ahead and get down our hack dose if we want to and i'm not gonna lie i really do want to so sure hack dose come on down what number do you hit three you hit three well three free let's see what is what does golgari have in three mana that can interact with you right a murder <laughs> Mm hmm. Murderous Rider, murder. Uh, it's actually quite a few things. Obnixless is cruelty. Three was a bad number for you to pick, Hakdos. You should have known that, buddy. If you'd have picked any other number, I'm sure you'd have been fine. Especially if you if you choose two. I think two is a fairly good number for you to choose. Now, we can actually play this a little bit slow. We're going to use Nahiri here and remove their Crawl Harpooner in that manner. I didn't start this fight, but I will finish it. Yep. That is what we want to do. Bum, 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 bum. Should also make our Mace of Valiant only cost two to equip, right? Or does it mean... Equip abilities you activate cost one less. Yeah, so it should only cost two here to equip And this should cost zero to equip so realistically we can get this down on a creature for for almost the free skis Garrick Well, we don't really have a target creature for it to destroy so it's probably gonna create two little wolves two little two two wolves now we could either hit some land on our turn and get a half dose down, or we could hit some creature of some variant. There's a land. Well, I said it. Time to put my money where my mouth is. Half dose protection from mana cost other than two. Okay, two is our our number this time around. Now if I can get half dose Mace of the Valiant, we would be sitting pretty nice. Don't get me wrong, I want to Banishing Light that, uh, that Garrick as soon as possible as well. Ember Cleave is, of course, an, an option. <laughs> a lot of stuff here, a lot of stuff. Disentomb, return target creature. Okay, well, that's a Crawl Harpooner, but they can't use that to fight our Hakdos, so... A little questionable. Maybe they just wanted it back in hand, huh? There's two more. Do they swing all of them at Nahiri? They should, realistically. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. So we can block here and be perfectly fine, I think. These aren't two mana cost creatures. These are zero mana cost creatures. So, yeah. Your sins won't be forgotten. We do have enough mana to go Banishing Lights and Wings of Hubris, which could give our Hakdos the ability to go above the wolves. Not necessarily Crawl Harpooner, though. Ember Cleave on to Hakdos with a. Oh, it just goes Spark Harvest. Okay. Okay. Cool beans, I guess. We can always go Ember Cleave and just kill their Garrick, but. <clears throat> I would rather Ember Cleave to the face, yeah? How much mana do we actually have? If I take this out, we still have four mana. This costs three to equip. Um, oh yeah, we can't equip this, right? Because Hakdos doesn't have three, it's two. Well, then Wings of Hubris should still work. Angelic Exaltation will work, but we're going to go ahead and Banishing Light. Take out this Garrick. Of course, it'll probably go back to their hand, to the command, whatever you want to call it. No, Showtime Eric is just going to concede. They said, you know what, fuck you. <laughs> Dog Trout going to be our next foe with the, the Kai Car. 
Interesting. And zero red mana, you say? Zero? And only red cards to play? No, I'll take a mulligan. I'll take that mulligan most certainly. It's for the free ski. How can I say no? Ah, uh, it's not too much better, but it does have some potential plays, so we'll keep it. Do want to go ahead and get down the castle Ardenville, so we'll have access to the white mana, and then we'll get down the mountain, followed by a hero. Now, on our next turn, we can actually go loyal Pegasus into a crystal slipper if we want to. That'll give it haste as well as bringing it on up to a three-one. Never mind, they just uh, they just glass casketed our hero. So I guess instead we'll just be revoking the existence of that little puny, uh, little puny glass casket. Alright, and then we'll get down the loyal Pegasus. Bum bum bum. Bum bum bum. Bum 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 I am going to try and play the Hacto so this way we can at least get the proc off the hero in case they intend on killing the hero. And if they intend on countering the Hactos, you know, it is what it is. They're Jeskai. We know they're going to be playing 30,000 counters. It's no it's no biggie. Ain't no thing but a chicken wing, right? My thing is, is you have to try to jam it as soon as possible. Um, or you wait all game and hope that a uh, slot opens up. But uh, you know, aside from that, what are your what are your actual options? All right. So what we do then is swing all in. Alright, so free damage. We do still have this glass casket. Commanded cost of three or less. That's not Kaikara, unfortunately. Nahiri doesn't really have a place. We could go for a response, but I think it's better to wait to see if they attack first. Right? So we'll throw down a crystal slipper and leave it on the board. Actually, we could have equipped it too, huh? Ah, well. Tomato, tomato. So we'll create another little 1-1. One, one. We'll shoot that Kaka in the face with a response. Unless... I don't know. We, Omen of the Forge won't quite do what they want it to do. It will kill our hero. But we did proc our hero prior to her death. So at least we'll get a 1-1 one, one and then kill their Kaikar. Haha, how does it feel to have your commander just wiped off the board? Not fun, is it? Not fun at all, huh? Now we can glass casket and take that little spirit, or we can just throw down Nahiri, which gives all of our creatures first strike, which means they can attack straight through the spirit, basically. Right? That is unless, of course, she gets countered. Nope. Fantastico. Alright, so we will use this one last mana to give our little soldier an extra bit of damage. And then we're going to swing all in. So that's five free damage. Potentially. Potentially five free damage. Alright, so they're going to sacrifice Omen of the Forge and Scry 2. Let's see what they uh, do. One top, one bottom. You, you don't like seeing your opponent scry one to the top. Then you're like, oh, they got something that they value, you know? They got something that they said, okay, yeah, this will help me get out of the situation I'm in, or this will help me get further ahead. And again, never something you want. So Deputy of Detention, going to be taking our little one ones, I think. Or maybe our Nahiri? I don't know. What do you do? They are going to be taking our one ones. That's fine. I didn't want them anyways, bruh. They're all yours, bro chacho. Now, we can glass casket that Deputy of Detention, but I almost want to say, like, you know, why? <laughs> Are you about to counter me again with an absorb this time? All right, fine. Fuck you. You know what? You know, you know what? Yeah. Yes, yes. Very nice. All right, so we'll swing in again for the five damage. All righty, in turn. So that Nahiri prop 
actually really good with our crystal slipper. It's basically a free, uh, free haste on whatever we want. Well, correct that. There goes Nahiri. <laughs> Our opponent's not really playing anything of substance themselves, it's just they're playing all the, the counter in the world. Alright, so we'll play a glass casket, take your deputy, because fuck you, and then play a robber. And swing all in with these lovely robber will croc. What do we get? Is that just a land? I'm going to be a little upset. It was just a land. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. Oh well. Oh well. Our opponent is down to 5 health, which coincidentally is exactly... Well, no, 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 we can deal 7. It's exactly the amount we can deal if they kill a creature of ours. <laughs> Flood of Tears, and Deputy Detention not going to be doing anything when she re-enters, which means it's going to be a little costly, but I think we can actually do this. No, 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 that, that will be too costly. Oh, right, right, because non-creatures. Okay. Um. Well, then, I say we go here. And here. Dream Trawler. Uh oh. Uh oh. We, we might actually be in trouble with that Dream Trawler. Just so we're all clear, that is a very, 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 very real problem. We'll throw this on the Dream Trawler, and that should at least allow us to have the defense against the Dream Trawler. Does that make sense? So we can we can defend and kill the Dream Trawler. And on our following turn, we finally have enough mana for Hactos. Hey, woo, yeah, go chance. Do we block this or no? If we don't block it. They're going back up to 10. Either way, they're going back up to 10. But if we don't block it, we can swing in for 5, 7, 8. 8 is our max. Which is not quite enough. If I block it, though, and they have some kind of instant speed spell, we're a little boned. All right, I'm going to go for the no blocks. They have something. They have a trick up their sleeve, and we can almost guarantee it. And a shock in a land. What for? I don't know. They're doing it. They are doing it. Oh, play your Kaikar. Play your fucking Kaikar. Arcane Signet. Oh, now Kaikar? Very confused. Opt. Okay. They're just trying to play out all of their cards. Doesn't make sense why you wouldn't opt before the Dream Trawler. But maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. <clears throat> So we go two, if they'll allow it. Of course, they can always counter. Two, three, and then put this here, right? Now let's see if they have the instant speed spell. Disenchant, glass casket, deputy to take out. Bone Crusher, right? Oh, they took Crystal Slipper. That's uh, that's interesting. We will swing in because we get to exile the top card of their library. Which was another fucking land. Hey, 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 look at that. How can I get so lucky? I don't know. I really don't, don't know. Don't understand it. The amount of luck just surging through this game is, is insane, actually. Our opponent has hit almost everything they needed exactly when they needed it. That's okay, though. 
you won't hear me get butt hurt about magic and its probability. Not now, not ever. Um, so our best course of action is to, uh, mm, I guess just lay down and take it, really. There's not much else we can do here, all right? We just, just kind of get fucked. Kind of, sort of, just a little bit get fucked. Hey, but that, that's how, that's how it goes. Got all these new players playing Brawl and all that good stuff. All that good shenanigans. We can almost just fling a fucking Hackdose, right? Ah, uh, unless the protection doesn't land properly. I guess that's always the downside of that. Either way, Hackdose, come on down! What'd you hit? Four. Four mana. Again, we're going to be swinging in because we pretty much have to. Dealing this two damage doesn't necessarily negate the amount of damage our opponent's dealing, but it does something, I suppose. It does something. So they can't uh, Elspeth Conquer's death our Hactos. What is their play? Like I said, we're almost to the point where we can just fling our fucking Hactos. Can we? It has protection, so it can't be targeted, right? Can't be blocked, targeted, yeah, from anything other than four. So we actually can't fling it. We might could fling. Let's see, Kai Kaikar is able to block our Hactos. So we'll throw this equip. Here, I think. We have to swing all in. It's pretty much the only options we have left at this point. And I guess we'll just wait and see what they have. Got a spectral sailor out of that. Well, the Spectral Sailor can defend against their Dream Trawler, I suppose. Again, I don't think we can fling our Hackdose. I want to get down the Spectral Sailor. Oh, what? You can. That's insane. That's actually insane. I thought you couldn't target it. I guess you're sacrificing? I don't know. I don't know how that works. But as long as our opponent can't gain any life, that is going to be a GG. We won. We did it. Dog trout. Trout. Whatever your name is. <laughs> Take that, Dream Trawler. You are nothing compared to our Hackdos. Black Halberd going to be our next foe for the day. Rocking the Royal Scions. I gotta say that's an interesting, uh, an interesting commander, and I'm interested to see what they do with it. I saw someone basically playing, uh, basically a regular Simic Flash deck. They had Ordero as their, uh, as their commander. And I couldn't help but think to myself, man, how lame can you be, you know? How are you going to go into a, a, a format where you get zero, absolutely zero uh, additional benefits from playing it and still play your regular Joe Blow copy-paste meta bullshit deck? Oh, it was so it was so befuddling, you know, where you, you just look at your opponent and you're like, I mean... You're, you're probably the only person on earth that thinks that's okay or fun, you know? Which is sad, because I feel like there's actually a lot of that that goes on in Magic, where people are like, really? Like, that's... 
that's what you're choosing to do, especially in like events or like brawl, you know, historic even. But that's kind of on Wizards of the Coast for making historic only be available in ranked slash events. I don't know if our opponent is actually here or not. We're just sort of dilly dallying because, uh, you know, it's fun to not play. It's fun to not play the game you came to play. It's much, much more fun to sit in silence and wait as your opponent uh, ponders life, takes their time, does their little grind. <laughs> All right, I actually am going to go for the Arcane Signet here. Boost us up to good healthy three mana and then four on our next turn. We can go Annex if we want to. We can go Tajik if we want to. It'll honestly depend on what our opponent plays here. All right, back on to my turn. Throw down the Castle Ardenville. I think I think it might be better to play the Annex here. We'll have to wait and see for sure. Um, but there there we go. Got a mighty little demigod down. And our opponent, eh, it may bounce it, may kill it. We'll have to wait and see. Bone Crusher. No, just Bone Crusher to the face, actually. They said, fuck your annex. We're going to the face. To the face, to the face. It's a little interesting, though, that they would just Bone Crusher the face there. And they don't even play it back down. Wow, that is... Are you okay, opponent? Are you, you alright? You feeling okay? I think we go for the Tajik here, in case they have the Sinister for the Hakdos. I'd rather them rather them do it on the Tajik. Yeah. Okay. Resolve. Cool beans. Glad we saw that one coming. Glad we could preemptively counter their counter by not playing what we want to play. Isn't isn't that a fun little mechanic to a game? To avoid being to to be able to play what you want to play, you have to avoid playing what the opponent plays to make sure you can't play what you want to play. It sounds very very complicated when you explain it in practice. You're like, no no no, let me explain it here. It's gonna be simple. And you go through all the steps, and then everyone looks at you like you're fucking retarded because it's not simple. <laughs> So we can swing in with Annex if we want to, to try and take out that Bone Crusher Giant. Do I want to? Do I want to Fanta, though? That is the true question. Well, we can throw Crystal Slipper there just because it works out kind of perfectly. So, sure. Sure, I'll swing in for the 12, the fatty 12 damage. They probably do exchange their Bone Crusher for my Annex, but I'll at least get two little 1-1s one -ones back for my troubles and we still have the, the mana available for a shock so I guess that's a to the okay Hakdos gets in a few more hits and our opponent will be donezo of course two mana is not too terribly difficult for a for an is it player to hit right <clears throat> that's a lava cool or scorching dragon fire uh, lightning strike isn't in meta anymore is it or isn't in standard anymore meta <laughs> um, but you know, you know there's a lot of two mana cards that could deal with Hactos Nadir Kraken let's crack a lack it that's not one of them but you know cool either way cool beans either which way we will switch this to the robber even though she already had haste. This at least gives her enough damage to deal with the Kraken if they want to do that trade. If they want to do that little tradesy. I assume that's where they would be blocking anyways. Um, but we're going to go for this. This little shocky shocky on the Nadiria Kraken so that 1-1 one, one may actually have a chance. No, they're going to negate a shock. Wow. That is, uh, that is very, very surprising. So what did we end up exiling? A land. Of course. I always exile a land. <laughs> it's always a land alright let's see if they have something to do with Hakdos if not that's going to be game just Hakdos hacking and slashing and whacking and smacking 
I wonder if this is a an Achilles uh, reference, an Achilles heel sort of reference, you know? Because he seems like a glass cannon, he's super unkillable, but also very killable. I don't think the hair is long enough for him to be like a Samson. Also, I think that's sort of the wrong story. So, swinging with Hactos, and then they have to have some kind of bounce, right? You don't just, you don't just not. So, we swing and swing in. They block here. They block there. Take the damage. Bounce or bounce, right? And then they take the one damage. So I don't swing in here or here. I uh, might as well swing in with the one one satyr. I really want to swing in with the robber as well, though. Alright, we'll just do the two attackers. We know they have something here, otherwise they would have conceded to the Actos. So go ahead, bounce it. Do whatever you need to do. Raisin Borrower. We will bounce that back into our hand. And then we'll play him right back down. Hey, look at that. We got another little 1-1 one -one for all of our troubles. Alright, so let's see if our opponent can come up with another answer to our Hactos. It's at 4 this time, so Brazen Borrower won't work, but uh, something else might. Nadir Kraken also won't work. Storm's Wrath, though, something like that could wipe. Could wipe everything. Crackling Drake, that's enough to block Hactos. That'll do. That will do. Now they still can't swing it with the Nadir Kraken, I was about to say, because we do have the Hactos, so it would sort of be hacking, whacking, and slashing. We can't. We can't even swing in. We're just going to have to wait. Hold up. Wait a minute. That whole shebang. Alright, so Hactos swings in. They trade out the Crackling Drake for our Hactos. Send him to the command zone once once again and then get him right back down. Woo! Hactos for life, baby. <laughs> and this time he has four again, four mana. Four CMC. So let's see if they can uh, they can do something with it. And if they kill him, guess what? We're replaying them next turn. We're going to keep on this Hactos train until you run out of removal. You run out of specific targeted removal. I like how they also haven't played their commander at all. They're like, we're on the side, we don't even know who they are. <laughs> this is a Nadir Kraken deck, you fool. <laughs> Alright, so there comes the Brazen Borrower, which is a three mana. Nadir Kraken's a three. And the Royal Scions, that's going to be a GGG. Good game, Mr. Opponent. I'm sure they've realized it by now. For the realm. Indeed they have. Okay, so we'll block, block, and then we might as well allow that, that other bit of damage through. So... Cool beans, and there's our Outlaws Merriment. How fantastic would that have been? And Black Halberd, or I didn't even realize that it. it's not Halberd, it's Hal Halberad. Anyways, gonna be conceding, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you win three brawl matches easily. Easily with Hactos, okay? Just wipe them up. Wax on, wax off, Mr. Miyagi, right? Anyways, thanks everybody for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the brawls. I hope you enjoyed the hack dose, hack and whack and slashing and all that good stuff. That's going to do it for today. Please be sure to leave a like down below if you enjoyed the video. Please be sure to leave a comment if you have any suggestions on this video, future videos, or past videos. And please be sure to subscribe if you're new here and hit that bell notification so you can actually get notifications whenever I go live or post videos or do any of that wonderful content creator stuff. Alrighty. Take it easy, and I will see y'all either later tonight or tomorrow. Peace.